Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm going to set up my weeklies for December. So if you didn't see my December plan with me video yet, make sure to check it out. It's going to be linked in the description and in the cards on the top right corner of this video. My theme for December is winter animals and for these weeklies, I painted a deer, a bird and a cute squirrel. So let's start with the first weekly spread. This time I really wanted to try out different layouts for my weekly spreads. In the first spread there is a long box for each day of the week and in the right bottom corner there is a big painting of a deer. The deer itself was a very grey and brown colored so I decided to add this little pinkish or peachy toned circle behind it to bring some color to this page. I mixed some white, yellow and red gouache paint for the background color. In my initial December setup, I used watercolors for the animals, but this time I just went with gouache so I wouldn't need to use two different mediums. When I started to paint the deer, I just first started going with light grey colors around the deer's face using some water to blend the colors. I slowly started adding some darker tones around the face, ears and body and kept blending. If you have another notebook that doesn't have watercolor paper, you might want to color the deer without blending excessively because usually the paper absorbs the color right away and the area dries before you can even move the color at all. I used my gouache here almost like watercolor and mixed a lot of water in to get super transparent and watery layers. Everything I'm doing here is just creating the base layer where I will later paint the fur on top. I was just slowly adding more and more dark brown tones to different parts of the deer's body to create some shadows and dimension. I especially darkened the edges of its body and neck and left the face pretty light. I started coloring in the antlers and even though I lost some footage here, I painted the right side of the whole antler darker and made it lighter on the left side or top and for the other one in the back I just took a more light grey color and painted it with that. I painted its eye and nose black and also darkened the back ear and created some definition to the nearest one with a light grey color. I feel like the head shape is a bit weird and something just isn't right with it but I wanted to be pretty fast with my weekly spreads this time so I just left it like this. I took my small liner brush and took a dark brown color and started adding these short strokes to create the deer's fur. I mostly added those lines to the spots where I had also used darker colors in the base layer. I again also just took water on my brush and blended some of the lines to make it a bit smoother and not so sharp. Even though I felt like it was super hard to explain what I was doing throughout this painting process, it was surprisingly fast and easy painting. I feel like creating these more simple weeklies is definitely a way to go for me since I usually spend a lot of time painting my initial bullet journal setups and I just sometimes need something a bit more simple and fast so I don't have to spend as much time on them. For this spread, I also included the small calendar next to the painting. I used my Mothwing and Coco Archer and Olive Acrylograph to color in the circles for the dates. I'm sad I don't have more acrylographs because I would love to have more neutral tones I could use for the same purpose. I used my Pigma Micron Fineliner to draw the boxes for the dailies and wrote the dates on top with my Muchi gel pen. And that's my first weekly spread done and now we can create the next one. For this spread I painted a cute bird called Coltit. This weekly spread layout is inspired by my amazing and talented friend whose Instagram name is Bloom and Dot. 
I saw this layout in one of her recent posts and I fell in love with it straight away and I knew I wanted to try it out. I will link her Instagram account in the description so make sure to check it out. So in this layout there's 8 boxes. There's 7 boxes for my dailies and the first from left has the cute bird painting. I drew every other box with this Mothwing Acrylograph marker and I glued some craft paper to the rest. I took this craft paper that came with a flower bouquet I bought a long time ago and I just got pieces in the sizes of the boxes. I wanted to use this lighter side of this paper in this spread but in the end I ended up actually using the other side with the darker color. Although I wasn't able to make that decision here yet so I didn't glue them on at this point. I wrote the days of the week with the simple cursive font and then I started to paint the bird. I again went with the base layer first so I just painted the colors in without thinking about the details much. This bird has a pale yellow belly, black head, greenish grey neck and black, white and grey wings. After I added some color to the bird, I started painting this little branch it's sitting on. I painted this similar branch in my cover page and it was just a nice and simple one, so I wanted to do it here as well. I painted the red berries with my vermilion royal talent squash and I painted the ones on top with a lighter red color and ones in the back with darker color. I also created more shadows to them later after painting the green leaves. I took some green, yellow and black for the leaves and tried to add them pretty evenly around the branch. I left a little line on the leaf uncolored and added again some more highlights and shadows later. I forgot to do this in the beginning but it's definitely good to mix more water in with the color so it's easier to start building the layers and slowly adding the details on top. By the way, I have a lot more videos coming this month so make sure to turn on the bell notifications if you want to be notified when I'm posting new videos. I just finished filming my new bullet journal setup and I'm super happy with how it turned out. I'm also going to film a full flip through of both of my notebooks this year, so if those seem interesting to you, remember to follow along. I added some darker green color to the root of the leaves and painted the tip with lighter colors. Adding these kinds of details definitely makes this painting look a bit more interesting and maybe more realistic too. I also painted some darker spots to the berries that were behind the leaves or other berries. I feel like I almost made the branch a bit more dark than I anticipated but it's totally fine. I painted a thin dark brown branch behind the leaves and then started working on the bird again. Now I started to intensify the colors and create more details. The bird has many layers to its wings, so I started creating these black lines to them, leaving white lines in between them. I added these small fur-like strokes to the bird's belly and to the back of its head with a white gouache to create some fluffiness. I also took a bit darker brown to color in the belly a bit more, especially under the wing. I painted the beak and its legs black and added thin strokes to its head too. I drew the eye black with a gel pen because it's way easier to draw that tiny little detail with a pen instead of a brush. I also painted a tiny detail in the eye with white gouache. I drew a box around the bird with a black pen and then glued in the craft paper pieces for my other boxes. I still didn't exactly know which side of the paper I wanted to use but decided to go for the darker one just to get a bit more contrast to this page. I wrote the dates on the right corners of the boxes with this messy handwriting. I also added this line to the plain boxes to separate my tasks from the weekly logs. This weekly is super simple but I still really love how it turned out and I can't wait to use this in some of my other themes as well. So this last weekly was definitely the most time consuming and frustrating one but I still like it the most. 
I painted this big painting here on the left side of the spread and wanted to include an animal that I've thought about since the beginning of coming up with this theme, a squirrel. I struggled so much with the sketch because I just wasn't able to draw the squirrel's face like I wanted to but luckily this painting came together in the end and I'm super happy with it. I wanted to create a super simple background for the painting and took this light orangey brown color. I had too much water mixed in with the color at first so it ended up being a little bit uneven. Later I mixed more color and painted the whole background again. I started to paint the squirrel by taking this dark orange color and painted its legs and paws with that color. It has a white belly so I left that white. I also left a part of its upper legs lighter and almost blended that color to the white stomach. I also just made the right side of its neck too thick so I later used the background color to make it a bit smaller. I didn't want to paint the face super dark at first so I just added some color to the top of its head and cheeks and used water to blend the colors a bit. I left the nose area of the face white. Again like in my other paintings, I'm just now creating the first base layer and I will create some details on top later. I added some light grey color to the top of its legs and blended the colors together. I painted the tail under the squirrel orange and painted the middle part with a darker orange color. Since the fur is thicker in the center, the darker color makes it look a bit more realistic. I added some light grey color in the belly and blended that together with the white color to add some details. I painted the eyes black but the squirrel still looks a bit dead at this point. I usually like to paint everything layer by layer and the first ones are often very messy. I also redid the eyes multiple times before getting it right. Then I finally started adding the first strokes. I painted these little grey and white lines to the top of its legs and darker lines to the bottom. Overall just mixing different colors and drawing the lines with them makes the fur look more realistic. It's good to sometimes smoothen the hard lines by taking some water on the brush and blending them. Like always, when you're painting animals, I would highly recommend looking at actual pictures of the animals so you understand all the details. If you're just using my painting as a reference, something might get lost in the process. I still darkened the head a bit, especially the top part and also made the center of the tail a bit more contrasted. I painted the nose light pink and drew a line for the mouth. I tried to paint some whiskers for the squirrel as I did in so many of my other animal paintings this month but like in those cases it just looked weird and too thick so I covered it up with paint. I added some white around its eyes and on top of the ear and then painted its toes. I don't really think this worked but it's such a small detail that I don't think it really matters much. Now that the squirrel painting was done, I started painting the branch it's sitting on. I just took this dark brown color and painted the whole thing with it. I also added a couple of these smaller branches coming from the right side. I first wanted to add the same plants here as I did on my last weekly and cover page but I just wanted something a little different and also more simple. This painting already took a little while so I was happy to create something a little bit easier. When the bigger branches were done, I took my smaller brush and started making smaller branches going to different directions. I'm going to paint some red berries here on top of the branches in batches. If you're interested in specific products I use in this theme, I will have them all listed in the description. I added a small dot to the berries and then took white gouache to start painting some snow on top of the twigs and squirrel. 
I also splattered white paint to the background as snowflakes. And with that, the painting is done. This again proved me that I should listen to my own advice more and actually trust the process because I really love how this painting turned out in the end even though I doubted that in the beginning. My camera stopped recording for a moment here but I just drew these big boxes for the days of the week and rounded the edges. I drew circles for the days with my Archer and Olive acrylographs, so I didn't do anything too interesting here for the layout itself. Lastly, I glued this piece of craft paper here in the right side of the spread and that's this spread and all of my weeklies all done. I really hope you like this theme and my video. The next video will be a flip through video so I hope you're also looking forward to that. I'm just quickly going to flip through these weeklies I made in this video. If you like this one, remember to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and with emojis, tell me your favorite weekly I made in this video if you're still here. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye bye!